if package management is being used in the target image at all, uh, because that's optional. And then uh, we check if, if smart is installed in the image. So, um, so we've, having checked those, uh, we're not going to skip. And uh, so we've got some basic, we've got, we've got this function, I'll come back to that. Um, We've got some basic tests here. We just check that we can run smart minus minus help, uh, a few other options, query a particular package is installed, etc. Um, then we get to something a bit more interesting. So in this test, we set up an HTTP server running on the test machine, uh, which has uh, got our deploy directory, which contains all of the packages we built during the, uh, the build of the image, uh, and any, any additional packages you've asked to be built. Um, and then we'll tell uh, Smart to add a channel that points to that uh, HTTP server that we've set up, and uh, do an update to fetch down the packages, or to fetch down the list of packages, um, some more channel tests, um, and install one, a package from that feed, um, download, download a package and install from the file, etc. So we're able to test uh, all of the basic functionality of package management just through this. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, the tests are not really that complicated, so, so we hope that that means that they'll be easy to write. Um, Sorry, one second here. Okay, so, uh, so in addition to the automated testing, we've got a couple of other features that are worth um, pointing out um, to do it related to automated testing. So, um, so we've, we have p-tests. Now, um, this was introduced in the previous uh, release and extended this in this uh, current 1.5 release. Uh, it was developed primarily by Bjorn Sternberg and a team at Enea, at Enea uh, in Sweden. And, um, uh, basically, uh, it runs tests that are supplied with an upstream piece of software. So, uh, pretty much any piece of, uh, of open source software you get, well, you'd hope uh, most of them come with a test suite um, out of the box. Uh, so, this will provide you with a, a clean way to run those tests on the target and get back your results. So. Uh, so we provide for uh, getting hold of those tests, uh, installing them onto the target as a group, and uh, running them using a run p-test script. So uh, we, we take the output from that and, and we try and coalesce it into a, uh, a standard form that uh, the uh, reporting tools can understand rather than having to um, understand all these different, uh, various different testing uh, uh, systems outputs. So. Um, so there's a, uh, we haven't got too many enabled at the moment. We've got about 13 recipes that have, have this enabled, things like dbus and glib and stuff like that. Um, and we're hoping to add more in the future. So, um, so uh, the, the next one, what's worth highlighting, is actually our auto builder. So not only do we provide 
do we actually use the auto builder ourselves to run our builds and, and do our releases and our, our regular uh, continuous integration, you can actually download this yourself. It's, it comes out of the box ready to, to run builds, run the tests, uh, and, and you can use it for your own purposes. And it's based on BuildBot, so it's pretty straightforward, sort of um, standard piece of software, um, and you can, you can customize as you need it. Um, other continuous integration, um, things like Jenkins and stuff like that are being used in the community. So uh, you, can, you can, can use those, but this one is something that we provide and we, we use regularly, so, um, so it's available if you need it. Uh, we're in the process of, of kind of in extending the documentation for this so it's a little bit easier to use. Um, so there is some documentation, documentation there now that you can have a look at. Um, so I, I'd say based on mailing this traffic, I think we're starting now to see other people making use of this, not just us, and, that, and that's really good to see. So, um, yeah, thanks to Beth Flanagan, who's working on that within uh, Intel uh, Yocto team. So, um, uh, and, yeah, if, you, if you're working on the core build tool, that's Bitbake. Um, it's probably worth knowing about this tool as well as Bitbake self-test. Uh, if, if you're working on the fetch or code or... Um, or any other piece of, of Bitbake itself. Uh, there's a little Bitbake self-test utility. Um, there's a few tests in there to do with fetching, parsing, uh, the, the, uh, the data store. So um, it's, it's, not, it's maybe not something that as, a, as someone building the OS you would use very often. It probably, you tend not to do work on Bitbake itself, but if you are, it's useful. And we run it every, uh, basically every build we do, we, we do a run through that just to make sure that, uh, that nothing is regressed there. So. And, uh, and finally, uh, we have a couple of other tools that we've, we've got in our arsenal. Um, there's test re-exec, so that goes through and um, basically Bitbake is a task-based build system. So uh, it's, we store when a, a task runs and, uh, and the, so we don't need to run it the next time. But it's possible that some of the in, if some of the inputs have changed to a later task, the task that normally runs immediately before it wouldn't be run uh, before running it the second time. So, uh, for example, you might need to rerun the install step uh, without having uh, immediately uh, pre prior uh, to that running the compile step. So um, in that case, if the install step, for example, did an, a move of a file to another location and that file didn't exist the second time it, it came around, then it's going to fail. So um, in order to pick up those kinds of uh, you know, issues that you won't necessarily hit on the first build but could come back to, back to you if you make a change uh, uh, for the second build, uh, we've, we've written the script. Uh, and it's, again, it's probably not something that there's an in, uh, sort of someone who's building their own OS, you're going you're gonna to use too much yourself. But um, if you're doing deep customization and you're building a number of your own, writing a number of your own recipes that you're including, then you should, you should probably um, be aware of those kinds of problems. And if you need to, you can run the script and, and pick those up. Um, along similar lines, there's a test dependencies script. Uh, which has been introduced in 1.5 and that's uh, contributed by Martin Janser and that's been really useful to find uh, issues to do with auto-detected dependencies. So uh, it's quite common, in, in auto, particularly in auto-tools-based bits of software, that they will go off and, and look around the system to see if a particular library exists. And if that library exists, they will enable some bit of functionality in the piece of software that, that they're building uh, that will use that library. So. Uh, that's great, obviously, if you're just a developer building that piece of software on your machine and that's the only place you're going to use it. But in a build system like ours, where we want uh, reproducible and uh, kind of consistent builds. We don't really want that auto detection to happen, or at least we want it to be under our control. So um, if you kind of don't pay any attention to this, then you can find that you build your recipe once uh, and then you, you, um, uh, you can you use those package, the packages that come out of it. Uh, and then you, you build it again, and because you're, because you're now building it after some other piece of uh, software is built, then it, the output packages are not quite the same. So what test dependencies does is it runs through a number of build cycles, it takes quite a while, and kind of highlights any of those uh, 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 kind of floating dependencies that have just crept in. So, and, we've, and now we've had the script, uh, Martin has run that over 
our, um, our a wide range of the recipes that we have and, and some of the ones in the other layers as well. And uh, we've eliminated a huge number of, uh, uh, of, of those dependency issues that could, you know, you quite often in the past, you would come up with some odd error because uh, in the middle of building one recipe, uh, it, it, that another recipe which thought it should depend on that has, has uh, suddenly found that the library is no longer there. So, so we eliminate failures like that using this script. So, and, this, and we would run these two scripts, I think um, we probably should be running them uh, for each release, and I think we will in future, so. So yeah, uh, now, uh, so that's stuff that we have already done, so I thought I might tell you about some of the plans that we've got for the future. So, um, so to do with the runtime tests, um, obviously, we can run those tests uh, on a QEMU image uh, under QEMU on, on a host machine, but really for, for testing people's images, they'd want to run it on their own hardware and, and, and do uh, regression testing on that as well. So, uh, so there are a number of complexities here. Um, I, our, our usual approach to, to things is try and keep it simple. So, uh, so we want to be able to kind of scale from someone who's got a single board or maybe a couple of boards connected to their build machine and, and they just want to run the tests on those uh, to get started, right up to people who have a, a rack full of uh, boards of different um, varieties and uh, you know they want to be able to have multiple auto builders connecting to these uh, machines and running tests. Um, we're still not quite sure how this is, this is going to work. It's, we're still kind of having some discussions. Uh, really, one of the reasons I wanted to get up here and talk to you today was to get some feedback, really. If, I'm sure all of you out there who, who are building embedded products have got your own testing systems, your own scripts that you've written. Um, you know, we, we really want to make sure that if we're building something that it works for, for you. Um, so, so it'd be interesting to hear how, how things work for you and how you would like it to work uh, in a system that we were building for you. So uh, the other thing we want to do is integrate p-test, uh, running these upstream test suites uh, within the automated uh, runtime test uh, uh, framework as well. So really the, the challenge there is that uh, a lot of these tests that, that come with up, upstream bits of software uh, you're pretty much always going to get some failures out of the box because uh, you know there'll be some optional bit of functionality that we're not using or it doesn't quite work on an embedded platform or whatever. So we want to be able to ignore those failures, but at the same time we don't want to, we, we don't want to ignore all failures in case that we regress on some particular uh, test case. So we, we're going to need to have some filtering of, of the results and make sure that we are able to tell the difference between a, a failure that we know about and a failure that we don't know about. So, so we're still kind of working out how that, how that will work and, and I think it won't be too long before we have a, a proper solution for that. Um, so there's, there's a number of runtime tests that we could add to the system. Um, we want to we wanna be able to test a broad range of the bit, bits of software that we're, the recipes that we have uh, in the system. Um, particularly, I think we'll, we will look to test uh, things like we would we would want to be running the piglet tests for our uh, to test our GL drivers, making sure that uh, all of the uh, OpenGL functions work properly. Um, yeah, and uh, we also want to run actual GUI tests. So instead of testing just a, a simple command or whatever, we want to be able to automate some piece of uh, X software or, or maybe something that's, that's written in QT and, and uh, make sure that that's functioning properly. So, uh, so we get a broader coverage of the bits of software that we're providing. So. And the other major area which we want to cover as well is, is non-runtime tests. So this is testing the build system itself. So, uh, and this would enable us to automate a lot more of the runtime, uh, of, of the manual tests that we're doing at the moment. So, doing things like changing inputs to the build system, adding appends, changing recipes, changing configuration variables, and, and making sure that the, the corresponding uh, change occurs in the output. So, um, so we're going to call this, OE, this, this script OE self-test. Again, it'll be a simple thing that the auto builder can run and without having to know the details and we'll get the report out at the end to make sure that uh, everything is, is correct. Uh, and there's actually, a, there's actually a proof of concept from uh, one of the QA guys out on the mailing list for that. Um, but 
this, this has a, a sort of a much wider scope of the kinds of tests that, that, uh, that we want to run uh, than the, the runtime tests, so that's, that's why we've kind of left it till, uh, till the next release. So we'll, we'll expect to have something out there in, in 1.6 for that. So, so uh, yeah, that we'll be testing things like bit -bake, the bitbake layers tool, um, testing installation of SDKs and making sure that the compiler that we're providing the SDK works and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, and just finally, I, I thought it was worth mentioning, uh, at least anecdotally, when we've been doing this, uh, th there's kind of a social if, uh, aspect to the whole thing as well. So uh, relationship between the QA and development team can sometimes be a little bit strange. You know, it's, sometimes it's a little bit us versus them, and uh, you know, they, they might say, oh, you make it, and I break it, sort of, sort of, uh, sort of thing. So uh, I think we've seen, we've seen a, a a lot more communication between our QA team and our uh, development team uh, through, the work, through them being able to work closely together and, and being able to cooperate on a single project. And we, we certainly expect that to continue uh, with our, f our future work. So uh, it's, it's not just us supplying them with something and, and them telling us about it not working or it working. Uh, it's, it's more of a collaborative thing. So. And this was actually the first time that our QA team worked together on a, on a, a particular project with, with the development team. So, so that was a useful thing. So yeah, uh, basically in summary, um, I just want to uh, hope that you, you, you've seen that we've introduced a new testing framework. Um, we're, we're not just uh, improving and maintaining the build system and uh, helping improve the quality of our own system. We're helping you to improve the, the quality of your builds and allowing you to run the tests on your systems that you need to run. Uh, so really, uh, it's, it's a more of a focus on, on the quality of the build system and the quality of the output. So, so yeah, uh, give it a try, send us some feedback, and uh, let us know what you'd like to see. Um, yeah, get involved, I guess. So, so yeah, any questions? Yeah, Peter. Have you uh, given any thoughts to running unit tests in a way with a bit So. Uh, the question is, have I thought about running unit tests with Bitbake? So Bitbake self-test is, is basically a unit test for Bitbake. So is, is, that, is that what you're looking for? Of the unit tests that come, typically come with uh, the source code of the various packages. Right. That's, that, that, that's exactly what p-test is. So uh, maybe I didn't explain it too well. But. Uh, at least our unit test, a lot of them uh, have, has to compile the code differently when unit testing because it, it has to start the way things that are not available. Right, yeah. I think, I think the, the, the way we might approach that is in the p-test package. You, you, basically, with p-test, you, um, you can define whatever you want as to, to, to when, you, when you're doing a p-test build of the software. So you, you could build it in a different way and store the alternate version of that software within the p-test package. Uh, and then when you, when you select to install p-tests, you'll be running that version instead. So um, I don't know if we necessarily addressed that problem directly. Um, it, it, p-tests is not something I've been directly involved in, but um, certainly that's worth us noting. Is, is that something you're not noticing in a number of software packages or just a few? We do it in most of ours. Okay, all right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll definitely um, see if we can address that. I, I, would, I think there's a way we can, but uh, yeah. Other questions? Alex. Um, just listening to what you're saying and, and to what Stefan was saying yesterday, um, once you can actually do the testing on, on real hardware, um, it, it would seem to be quite useful, I mean, certainly to us, to use that to test the hardware. You know, for subcontract manufacturing, QA reporting, it would seem to be quite a good foundation to, to build upon to be able to do that. Is that something you've considered? Or? 
Uh, so, yeah, the question is, uh, have we thought about testing the hardware itself, sort of qualification or, or yeah, of, of the hardware? So, I guess for that, uh, we, obviously we would need to have that software which is, which is being used to test the hardware, but there's no reason why, you know, I, don't, I don't, wouldn't have thought that would be a particularly challenging thing for us to do. As long as we can cross-build that software and run it on the target and, and look at the output, uh, I would think that would be a, a pretty straightforward thing to do. And certainly, when when we were doing, we would be able to test on real hardware. We would uh, we want to be doing that for uh, for making sure the hardware works. Yeah, absolutely. So, yes. Uh, on the question of real hardware, can you say any more about the actual sort of roadmap? So for like simple tests, would you, that be in 1.6? Definitely. We'll have a, we will absolutely have a basic ability to run tests on, on real hardware in 1.6. I don't know if we're going to get the full sort of uh, framework to run, you know, a, a huge test rack completed in 1.6, but definitely you'll be able to run on, on, a, on a nominated piece of hardware. So. so it's sort of in some ways in between simple and advanced, as long as you only test in one piece of hardware, you think simple will be... Advanced in the sense that you could do quite a lot of testing on that one piece of hardware. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think particularly on the sort of ARM side, because you've got the flexibility in the IP, you really want to test on hardware, real hardware. You know, QMU will. It's good for testing QMU, but <laughs> sometimes it doesn't really get you there for testing the hardware. So that sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We certainly hope to enable all the tests that people need to be able to do on their hardware. So, yeah. Other questions? Do you know about the lava? Do you know about testing? Yeah, you know, I, I had a look at, uh, had a quick look at lava. Um, I, I wasn't able to find a lot of documentation on it, and it did kind of seem like it was quite uh, oriented to running on, on the Ubuntu. Um, slash launchpad sort of framework, um, whereas we try and be quite a bit more flexible. We try and run on any distribution and, and not be too tied down. But um, certainly they're doing the same kinds of things that, that we would look to be doing. I think that the, what we've done now is the stuff that we had to do without that, that we weren't kind of rewriting something that, that other people are already providing. So, so now we're into a phase where we're going to try and uh, figure out where to go next. And, and certainly we would be looking at other, how other systems work and, and, and particularly how, how well they solve people's problems or, or otherwise. Um, so, yeah. Sure. Hi. We will create a test report. So can I run the test and then put it in the compatible um, form for your two compatible test report? Something like that? Right. Sorry, the question is uh, can you... Uh, produce reports as an output. So, um, what we pr what we get back is a log. It's it's a typical kind of log that you get out of Python unit tests, which just says pass fail. Um, you can certainly send that out, use it, um, reuse it, examine it. I mean, no, but normally the output of the test is just whether the the thing succeeded or not. So. Um, uh, but certainly, I, th I think reporting is, is something we will be looking at extending in the future. So, yes. Yeah, so the question is, uh, if you've got multiple binaries produced by, as part of your unit testing, will the system be able to handle that? Right. So, yes, uh, because you're defining as part of the, with, with p-test in, in your recipe that, you, that is deploying a bit of software, uh, you define what, what should be run as part of when it's actually running it on the target, so you can run whatever, you, if it's multiple binaries or, or just one, um, you're, you're in control of that, so it, it, that would, wouldn't present any problems. Uh, it really depends on what output that produces. Um, you might have to you might have to wrap it in a script. I think probably. Um, any other questions? Yes. You use this in the CI for the Octo project itself. Right? Yes. Uh, how do you select the uh, images 
the immature stage so which you apply it? So uh, in the auto builder, it, it, uh, there's, a, there's a stage beyond where it builds the image, uh, which is um, the run, to run what's termed the sanity test, which is exactly this. So uh, I, think, I think it's hard coded. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not an auto expert on the auto builder, but I can certainly put you in touch with. Yeah, but my point is, um, so there are, there are a couple of imagery types which are included in, in the Octo project. Yes. Uh, but typically you would change those and, and, and uh, add packages or remove packages. Um, but then, uh, th this is exactly where, where problems may occur because of missing dependencies or because of that it doesn't build correctly if a certain package is not pre present. Right. So these are, uh, unless you try out combinations, uh, you're not going to catch that kind of issue. Well, I, I guess I would say we, we try and the base images that we provide and that we test on the auto builder are kind of a, as, as broad as we can get in terms of the, 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 the recipes that we have within the, the base system. So um, obviously when you're running auto builder on your own, uh, your own things, you're going to be able to nominate which images get built. So uh, you'll be able to nominate also which ones get tested. So sorry, does that answer your question or? Yeah, well, I'll turn it around in a, a, a suggestion. Okay. What we do in, in build routes is we, uh, we make random builds, mm -hmm. so randomly select packages and build those. Uh, now, we don't have runtime testing, so it's only half of the story anyway. Uh, so this could be something that you can add to update the imagery types with some random, randomly selected packages and see if it still works. Right, actually that brings up an interesting point. So um, one of the other things I didn't mention that we, w we would like to add in future, and it could be 1.6, would be um, there's a thing which we've, which is being called world image. So um, we, we have the ability to build world, which is every bit of software that we support, right? Um, and the, the next thing is to try and install all of the packages that are produced though, into a huge image. Um, I, I don't know if, if, if we could do that or we could just install a random package or whatever. Um, uh, so that might be something that would, would solve that particular problem. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly it's one thing, you know, with all of the stuff, it's one thing to be able to build it and it's another thing to be able to actually use the output packages in some form. So, so yeah, it's a good point. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>